someone I love dearly gave me a very precious and generous gift. She painted a picture of me and my favorite dog walking down a rocky path in Ireland, and she knew it was a special place for me. The sky was gloomy, and though the terrain was beautiful, however, it looked hard and unforgiving. There was something in that painting I just couldn't put my finger on until years later when I caught her staring at me. She had a single question for me, why? At that moment, I also understood that this was the same question in her painting, why? She knew of my flaws, she knew of my character, my capacity to love, and above all, she knew of my consistent and unwavering faith in Jesus. I just don't understand the chronic level of pain and suffering you've endured for so many years, she said. I know you love God and you sought to give him your entire life. I just don't understand all of this, why it keeps happening to you. In an atmosphere of honesty, I had to admit that I had asked the same questions for a couple of years myself, time and again within a context of a wide range of emotion. And ultimately, that question got me nowhere. As I concluded, I was asking the wrong question. Then what is the right question to ask, she inquired of me. Well, instead of asking why, I started asking myself, who? When I started asking who, it was like an avalanche of understanding began to download in a form of truth. I was amazed to discover how much chronic pain and suffering, tragedy, can knock you off center and lead you far away from home, little by little by degrees. By asking who, the truth began to clear the fog, and I was shocked to see how far I drifted. I drifted so far from his word that I began to interpret reality through the lenses of my damaged emotion and long periods of suffering. Consequently, I had begun to lose sight of the shoreline and the lighthouse, so to speak, meaning the word and the spirit, which had historically always been what had guided me to freedom and peace. I had allowed the high waves of pain to block my view, and that's when a person is at the greatest danger of becoming isolated and losing their way. And that's also when the wolves begin to smell the fear of vulnerability as they will invariably sweep in for the kill, as their goal is to always end this kind of journey permanently. You see, with no light to guide you and a shoreline to keep you connected, you can't really know how far the stormy waves can take you away from home. Essentially, that's exactly what happened to me. And at a time of real honesty, I came to perceive that, in fact, I had drifted so far, I couldn't even see the shoreline anymore. And I can't tell you how spooky that realization can be. And that's when the story of the prodigal son became very real to me as he too had lost his way and consequently he had found himself eating with pigs and living in misery. I began to see that in many respects that story was also about me. I had become the prodigal, that it was God's love that never gave up on me. Even in my blindness, it was his love that caused him to come and find me. And when he did, it was me that was found forgiven and brought back home. That's really my story. It was truly like he left the 99 to come and find me. It wasn't about shame and I wasn't met with lecture or blame. My experience was just like that story. It was him running down the road, so to speak, to embrace me. A father whose only thought was to bring home a son and to make him family once again. Not to enable me, but to empower my return. Yes, forgiving my sins, but most of all, helping me walk side by side through my pain and suffering, offering me perspective concerning all of his promises that he had given me in his word for this life and throughout eternity. I had begun to see how much his promises are simply an extension of his character. Therefore, 
are completely immutable. As Jesus said himself, heaven and earth will pass away, but his words never will. Which is why from then on, I don't really ask why anymore. Mostly I begin with who? The one who promises. His promises are solid. They're bedrock. I begin with the fact that he's compassionate and full of mercy. That he's my father and has and will always love me. I mean, just think of the lengths he went through just to save me and you. I rightly choose to stand upon his truth, regardless of what temporal or chronic pain, what my feelings, what my circumstances might say. I choose to trust in his goodness, his love, and his mercy. I choose to remind myself that regardless of what tomorrow might bring, that he loves me now, he loves me tomorrow and for all eternity. I choose to remind myself that he is the God today as well as yesterday and whatever might come my way, whatever the future might bring, I know he has already been there and is there he will safely take me. In light of these things, I choose to practice gratefulness and thankfulness after all, he through his word promises that he will never, ever leave me nor forsake me. Well, these are words I wrote after the long and painful season called why. These words reflect the beginning of insight as I begin to ask who instead of why. I believe in some respects in a very real sense it saved my life. Perhaps as you listen to the words of this song, you too will consider returning to the one who has never left you nor forsaken you. Perhaps when you choose, you might also in essence find him running down the road to embrace you as you discover that it was never about your failures, but about bringing you back home like he did for me to make you family in this life and for all eternity. These are words I wrote following the season I call Why. These words reflect the beginning of my understanding as when asking who began to illuminate my life. May it help you as it did me. Now that I've walked down this road a mile or two, I can see some things that had once blocked my view. You, you see, it seemed that the landscape of my world had turned into a prison of suffering and pain with no real hope of escape. And then, during the rain, you began to show me my pain, and I hate to say I thought you were being cruel. But as the fog began to clear, I could see that in reality, you were always being a loving father to me. Even in my accusation and rage, your faithfulness, your love, your goodness always stayed like your promise to me that you would never, ever leave me that you would never forsake me, as that promise was based on who you are and not on me. As the fog began to clear, as I began to see, I saw the entire time, according to your promise, I began to understand and perceive that all the while you'd been setting me free.
how to conclude? Well, you might say that I truly began to see that my whys would only begin to be answered when I chose to begin asking who. That was my fork in the road, as that became my end, that also became my beginning.